afternoon, Safari Live viewers. My name is Noelle. I'm doing a small little interview with you all today. On camera, I've got Sebastian. It's very overcast. It was freezing cold. Well, freezing cold by eye standards this morning here in the sands. Looked like it would possibly rain, but the clouds have lifted. So we're out seeing what we can find you to show you today. We've been doing a little bit of birding. I'm going to take over Byron's 100 birds and see if we can add on any or just up him on his 100 birds. There's an interesting one, Seb, if you can just go there to about 10 o'clock. Green wood hoopoo or a red billed wood hoopoo. He's just there on the, there, you can see him beautifully. Long, what's called a decurved beak. So that decurved beak is an over curvature. So you see how he's probing inside of there? He's looking for insects. And I say he, the, the male and female are, are virtually the same. A little bit of sheen, a little bit of iridescence on the feathers. So basically with iridescence, what you're getting is you're getting these very uh, uh, smooth, almost see-through pockets within the feather itself, within, within the, uh, the makeup of the feather. And then when the light hits it at different angles, it changes colors. So usually you see more than one. So there, there, that one flies, and you can hear this one's calling, and just back into my right-hand side, you can hear the other ones answering. They're a gregarious bird species, so it's usually a pair, and then you've got, um, you've got youngsters from the previous season around as well. You can see him getting through that, that deadwood where a lot of insects will be. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. All right. So I'm assuming Byron has this one on his list because it's a fairly common bird. You see it all year round in this area. If you go to our one o'clock seb, you've got the mate that's over there at the bottom and then you're gonna have another one from the group pulling in just now, just at our half 12. And then they'll travel around in little groups like this. And this is what they do for most of the day. And then just at the back, there's a little dwarf mongoose seb. So it's now. gonna move, there's a little bit of, of brush. Mm. I'm going to try and reverse before we linked over from James with his giraffe and the Mara. No, it's gone back. We had some really beautiful dwarf mongoose tracks on the side of the road. Smaller than... Hello, Cianac. That's a great question. I've been guiding for a decade now. I started guiding in the Waterberg, um, and I've moved down to Lofeld. I've worked in Zambia, I've worked in Kenya, I've worked in Namibia, I did some lodge management up in Botswana, um, and then I've been back in the Lofeld area for just over a year now, and i um, busy exploring my options, so that's why I'm here at Safari Live. Thank you. All right, let's see what else we can find. This overcast weather is very interesting because it's actually not very windy. All right, we are going to start linking back to the Mara. Steph has a male lion. We are going to keep carrying on this side and see if we can find you any cats or maybe some elephants. I love some elephants. And while Steph is up there with talking to you about this male lion, uh, going through hopefully a lot of the conservation that we're dealing with up in East Africa and, and Southern Africa. There's only, there's less than 25,000 wild lions left on the whole continent. It's dropped 100 years ago. There's about 200,000 lions. So the conservation of lions is a very big deal for, for our community. And it's something to talk about. The CITES uh, convention that they had recently, uh, instead of putting the lions, they should be on the endangered species list. They put them in my bowl, but Steph can um, double check that for me. So it's something that we have to constantly talk about and constantly uh, keep bringing up because they're an integral part of the ecosystem. All right, linking over to Steph with his male lion.